hey guys i hope you're doing all right and welcome back to the b1n 4g4 channel and welcome to a review of the 2021 belgian grand prix weekend well this is probably going to be a rather short um episode am i right siraj yeah of course it will be a relatively short one compared to the others yeah of course for those of you that don't know only two out of 44 laps were completed um, the actual race so therefore half points uh, awarded but we'll get to that but first of all on to Q1 and it was Yuki Tsunoda who was the surprise knockout um, this session of course people have been talking uh, about his performances so far uh, Siraj what do you make of that? I mean yeah in an Alpha Tower you'd Honestly, be expecting Yuki Tsunoda to at least be getting out of Q1, um, and he's not even managing to do that. So it's, I have to say, it might just be a real concern for the Alpha Tauri team. Red Bull Driver Academy is notorious for, as to all, an angry Austrian man, and also it's just a habit of like wasting uh, talent. Which I mean, of course, Yuki is no bad driver, as he proved. Too. Uh, um, of course, he has been sort of slacking so far this season. Um, yeah, well, it is what it is, and hopefully, he can improve. Of course, it is still his rookie season. Um, yeah, so, Siraj, uh, what happened in Q2? I mean, in Q2, like, it's been so long since Daniel Ricciardo's actually got through to the top 10, I feel, and he managed to do it again on Saturday. He managed to get through to Q2. And, of course, it was raining. And we had the surprise knockout of Lance Stroll, who's normally done very well in the wet. If we just go back to last year, the Turkish Grand Prix, where he actually managed to grab pole in the wet conditions. And this time he was out in Q2 because he actually couldn't manage to get a second flying lap in which meant he couldn't get through to Q3. Yeah, I mean of course it is disappointing for Stroll. Um, I feel like he, he would have gotten into the top 10 as we know how good he is in the wet like you said. Um, and of course highlighting that Ricardo got into Q3, I mean we shouldn't really be highlighting as it should be happening regularly. But alas he has not in getting into Q3, so I mean, it, 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 it shows that maybe he is m moving, ah, it shows that perhaps he's uh, getting more accustomed to the car over the summer break, as we saw in Q3 qualified uh, P4, which is quite good. But of course, it was his teammate who was probably the main talk, or second main um, talk of the session as he crashed out going up um, Eau Rouge. Uh, so what do you think happened there? So I mean uh, looking at the crash of course it was a very high speed crash quite a frightening one and looking at it I think he just got a bit of oversteer at Radion and then just when trying to correct it he just sent himself into the wall and well, that was the end of his qualifying. Um, yeah I mean Kudos to Sebastian Vettel, who obviously came to check on uh, Norris after. Um, so, a good bit of sportsmanship there. But, of course, uh, and of course, that meant that um, a red flag was brought out. H however, following the red flag, I feel like all eyes were just on one person. And so, I think you know who that person is. I very much do know who that person is, and that person was Williams. George Russell. Yes, so, now, go on. After the red flag, I mean, of course, when it's raining, it's always a good chance for even the lower teams to get an opportunity to qualify high or finish high in the race. And this was a very good example of it with George Russell in the Williams, managing to qualify an extremely high P2. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what he was on, or what the mechanics had put into the car but he was just on it like I remember seeing that Lewis Hamilton could not qualify him and I, I genuinely thought he would get his first point in his career alas Max Verstappen being Max Verstappen um, out qualified him by about three tenths but still 
E2, New Williams. It, it is some mighty stuff. And it's, I mean, and his rival next year's Mercedes C qualified E8 in oh, like the second fastest car on the grid. So, I mean, Suraj, they're starting to be. I mean, I, th- I think I think we're starting to see who, who sh- who's more deserving of that seat, right? Toto, if you're listening, drop Bottas, sign sign George. Yeah, I doubt he's listening to a guy with eleven subs, though. I mean, let's be never real. <laughs> yeah, we never know. Oh, um, another highlight of Q3 was uh, Daniel Ricciardo, who obviously got into P4 in McLaren. Like I said. He's probably become more accustomed to the car over summer, over the summer break, uh, which is good to see. Um, yeah, I guess that rounds off qualifying. Sorry, do you think to add for that? Not really. I mean, only thing I can say is that after last week's Hungarian Grand Prix, where Stroll and Bottas both got five place grid penalties, Bottas's P8 became a extremely disappointing P13 and Stroll's P15 became last on the grid. Yeah, I mean, of course, that session was extremely like pleasing for some and terrible for others, namely Bottas, Stroll, Norris. Um, but, I mean, in Formula 1 drivers usually bounce back. Well, I really can't say that for Bottas. Yeah. Well, anyway. On to race day, and it rained. The end. Siraj, call it a wrap? Uh, I mean, I have to say the, the most uh, enjoyable part of Sunday might just have been that clip of Vettel and Mick Schumacher playing football in the garage. Yeah, I mean, of course it was way too dangerous for the drivers to go out there and I mean, I'm not saying they should have gone out there. Um, of course, it, yeah, safety first. Uh, Siraj, what do you think would have happened had the race gone on for the full 44 laps? If the race had gone on, it would have actually been an amazing one. Like, of course, there were always talks like, you know, how George is lining up in P2 and at Spa, if you can send it up the inside, you kind of want to be in second because when you're starting first, I believe you're starting on the left hand side so it would have been really beneficial for Russell if he managed to send it at turn one and potentially lead the race yeah I mean you've seen George Russell uh, make a dive bomb on a, on a experienced um, per- driver before I mean it's a gear 2020 where um, he was he also qualified P2 but he just sent it at the inside of the so he just got all out of shape um, just took the lead. Um, I don't know if he could have done that Williams v Red Bull. Um, I mean, you never know. It's George Russell. I mean, also from P3 was Lewis Hamilton, who I feel like would definitely want to get past at least one of the top two drivers. Um, yeah, it, it, like in it, it, the opening few laps. And also Daniel Ricciardo, who was in P4, maybe if he had gotten a better start, he would have maybe be he would maybe be challenging for a podium. Who knows? Um, so, what about the drivers who had these grid penalties, like Norris, and, uh, Stroll, and so on? Yeah, like we've seen how good Stroll is in the wet. Norris was also very decent. I don't think we've really talked about the fact that in Q1 and Q2, Norris actually topped both of the sessions, so he was really the favourite for pole. So I feel like he could have really had a good comeback drive and make his way up the grid. I think the same could also be said for Stroll. He, you know, he's obviously quite good in the wet, so he could have, he could have definitely been able to make his way up the field like Norris. Bottas, I mean, I don't really know any notorious wet weather drives from him, so. Yeah, I mean, of course, he is a really good driver. Um, but like... We know the Mercedes isn't that good uh, at like following behind cars as seen uh, last year. Um, I don't know. Maybe he could have gotten some points. 
and yeah, that. maybe he could have just because of the fact that he's in a Mercedes. Maybe like just with some control. Maybe because it was raining so much. Even if it rained a little bit less, there was every chance that there could be crashes, safety cars. So maybe just like that, automatically drivers who were lower down would just make their way up the grid. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I feel like it would have been a rather topsy turvy Grand Prix considering. I mean, it's 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 in the wear and also it's Belgium, but. Alas, um, John never knew, as well, only two laps of the race were completed, most of them under the safety car, all of them under the safety car rather. Um, that, I guess that sadly rounds out this very short episode uh, of the Racing Line podcast. Siraj, anything to add? No, a very short weekend if you don't count the race because there wasn't really much, so nothing else. Um, yeah, so guys, if you did enjoy uh, this rather short video, then do be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Formula 1 content. Um, and this is B1N44 out. Goodbye.